Yo, what's going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back with another video. So today what we're going to be doing is a top 10 brawlers in Brawl Stars. Now this was by far the hardest version of this video I have ever made before with the meta being all over the place with the tanks now being OP and the tank counters, some of them being OP, some of them decent and then the actual really good brawlers in the game that don't counter tanks, how do they do? It's just all over the place right now. I tried my absolute best to get this list together, but it was pretty difficult. There are probably some brawlers that you guys are going to disagree with or think are outside of the top 10 that should be in the top 10. And I mean, that does make sense. I'm just kind of going off of everything that I know, and this is probably subject to change as time goes on. But with that being said, let's hop into some games and let's show you guys the top 10. Now, coming in at number 10, we have Gale. And it's been a while since Gale has been on a top 10 list in Brawl Stars. It hasn't been meta for quite some time, about a year now or just under a year. But it's starting to come back into the meta. Now, it has nothing to do with the fact that the actual brawler itself is much better than any other brawler. It's actually a pretty average brawler. They did give it a slight buff. But what makes it OP is the fact that tanks are now meta. And it is so easy for you to get your super as Gale. And all you do is just blow them away. They can't even come near you. It's kind of like an air sweeper in Clash of Clans. You know, you just push that back and they can't even come close to you. It's just the issue with this is how fast you get your super. It's kind of ridiculous. How often you get it tanks basically can't do anything against you unless it's in a super you know kind of slim area and they push you against the wall there's absolutely nothing that you can do as a tank against scale the only issue is that its dps is not high at all and its gadget is practically useless on half the maps or even more than half so this is why we're going to leave Gale low. Again, its DPS isn't good, but that super is just way too annoying to not put in the top 10 list when tanks are the absolute meta. So with that being said, let's hop onto number 9 and let's keep going. Now coming in at number 9, we have M's. Now this one is pretty self-explanatory. Just like with the Gale, it is rising in the meta because it counters tanks. Now this is also a pretty decent brawler against other mid-ranges, but it does really good work against tanks and it's viable in a lot of different modes. Good in Heist, good in Siege good in brawl ball obviously good in gem it's really versatile and that's really what makes it really good um obviously good against tanks tanks is the is the meta right now so this is why it's going to be number nine but it's very versatile much more versatile than gale so that's why we're going to leave it at number nine as well as the fact that its dps is really high you guys can see here once you get them in your super and you're kind of just chaining away there is absolutely nothing that they can do against you it's a very strong brawler, which has two very strong star powers that you can play depending on what mode you want to play. And then its three gadgets come really, really clutch for when they're trying to kill you and you're trying to just stay away. As you guys can see here, once you get them caught in your super, it's basically done for them. There's nothing that they can do. And this is what you're going to be facing a lot of the time. So, M's is going to be our number 9 brawler. Again, another tank counter. Let's move on to number 8 and let's keep going. Coming in at number 8, we have Stu. Now, Stu recently lost its knockback, which is one of the most important parts to this brawler. It's what made it hard counter so many different brawlers. It basically made it impossible for some of those brawlers, such as Mortis, to actually beat it. Because if you tried to dash onto a Stu as a Mortis, you would just get knocked back and not get a hit. So, what, you know, this has obviously made it move down quite a bit it was number one or number two on basically every single list but now it's number eight on ours i do expect it to go back up when the new gadget comes out because it being able or he being able to dash through a wall is pretty insane i mean that's kind of unheard of for Stu to just dash through a wall and kill you a wall is obviously supposed to help you but for Stu to just be able to dash through is pretty ridiculous uh but anyways for now it's gonna be number eight not really the greatest tank counter it's not bad against tanks is actually pretty good against tanks but it's not like gale and m's where it's just an absolute hard counter as you guys can see here i have a pretty easy time killing the primo but i have a pretty hard time you know actually killing it i can get it low but i can't actually kill it or finish it off and that's a very you know difficult thing now i'm not that good of a stew obviously good stews are going to continue being good stews but as for itself as the brawler it's going to be at the number eight spot i think in this meta now coming in at number seven we have barley now barley is definitely the strongest thrower in the game and it is a very very strong brawler right now now the reason it is so much lower on the list than i would like it to be is obviously again because tanks are meta now barley is okay into tanks because you can keep your range shoot over walls and kind of just chip but once those tanks get their super you're dead there's nothing you can do about it you're just gonna die and unfortunately that's just the issue too many times in this current meta too many times you're gonna get caught out you're gonna die as the barley and with barley you've got to try and hold control if you can hold control over the entire course of a game you're going to win but you can't do that as barley it's just not going to happen with the tanks just jumping on you or supering you there's a zero percent chance it's going to happen so it's going to be number seven 
But again, it's a very versatile brawler. It's good in a lot of different modes. It's good against a lot of different brawlers. And some of the brawlers that counter it are no longer meta. So you're going to have a pretty easy time as Barley when it comes to holding lane. But sometimes a Primo is going to jump on you or something like that. And there's just going to be nothing you can do about it. You just have to accept death, run it back, and go back. Which is why it's going to be number 7 and not any higher. That being said, it's so again, keep going. Go into number 6. Now coming in at number 6, we have Bull. Now Bull is one of those brawlers... That is a tank that got a really major buff. Now, I personally, as you guys can see from the gameplay, am not the greatest bull in the world. But people like Pika are going to absolutely go crazy with this buff. I mean, bull is a very good brawler. Don't get me wrong. This gameplay might be a little bit scuffed, and I don't really try too many times to get, you know, the greatest gameplay possible. But, I mean, bull is just an absolute unit of a brawler. The second gadget, I forgot what it's called, is so broken with the fact that you're just going to get super constantly throughout the game and that's basically three guaranteed kills on whatever brawler you want you just dash onto it click that gadget button and you're right in front of him as a bull sometimes stunned him sometimes knocked him back like it's ridiculous bull is just way too strong right now it's not really that fair um same with you know a lot of the other tanks it's just an unstoppable force that can keep going in and in and in and it doesn't matter if it dies it doesn't matter if you get a kill, you're going to get your super back and you're just going to keep going in and eventually you're going to win the game. So this is why we're going to put it at number 6. It's good in a lot of different modes, surprisingly. It's a lot more versatile than you'd think. It used to be only good at heist, but now it's good at a lot of other things. But we're going to keep it at number 6 because the top 5 brawlers I think are just above and beyond everything else. So let's hop into the top 5 and let's show you guys what it is. Now coming in at number 5, we have Gene. And before we get into this, you guys should pay very close attention to the Colt because this might be the greatest Colt game of all time. But in the top five, we have Gene. And now he actually wasn't even in my list in the last meta. Because the last meta was a little bit, you know, strange for Gene. There was Stu in meta, Surge, Bell, Max. You know, a lot of brawlers that Gene actually doesn't do that well against. But now when we have brawlers like Ems or Gale, you know, tanks, mid to close range brawlers in the meta, this is exactly where Gene excels. It's going to be super easy for you to hit those pulls on, you know, the short range brawlers that don't really have a lot of range that can't really do that much. It's really easy for Gene right now. Obviously, the DPS isn't there. Don't look at this pull. The DPS isn't there, so you're going to need teammates that obviously do a lot of work as well. But it is a great kind of support now brawler against the tanks that you're going to be facing. And the close range brawlers that are going to counter the tanks that you're going to be facing. It's going to be really good. It's definitely going to be the best mid in gem grab now with the tanks being meta and all that. You're going to have constant super, constant pull. It's going to be really easy for you to win the games. That being said, this is going to be our number five brawler in the current meta. Now coming in at number four, we have Frank. Now Frank is just broken right now. There's no way around it. Frank is a super amazing brawler. That's just an absolute unit on the battlefield right now. You cannot stop Frank. There are going to be games where Frank is going to 3v1 for the entirety of the game. Because if you hit your super as Frank, you are chaining your super, you are getting kills. And on top of that, you have 11,000 HP. So there is basically nothing that anyone else can do about it. Now, obviously, there's going to be counters. You're going to die to those counters. But luckily for you, you are going to charge your super as you are dying to these counters. So you're basically going to have super all game. Brawlers are going to have to stay away from you all game. They're going to be afraid of you. There's going to be nothing that they can do. And Frank, I don't know. Frank is just so ridiculously good right now. It's just not even fair. This is a really quick game. I mean, we had some really easy opponents this game. Um, but yeah, Frank was... He's, he's just ridiculous. He is way too good right now. I hope he gets a nerf soon because he definitely needs one. But this is going to be our number four brawler. Now, this one is really easy. Coming in at number three is going to be Colette. I mean, this is just the be best tank counter that there is. Like, there's not going to be a better tank counter than Colette. It's four shots to kill any tank in the game. Doesn't matter how much HP they have. It's just a really good brawler. It dominates heist. You guys already know that. But now it just hard counters basically every meta brawler in the game. So it's going to be super easy to get wins with. You're not really going to have a hard time, you know, killing anybody, really. It's just so ridiculously good right now. And it is so easy to hit shots. It's so easy to chain supers. It's so easy to hit everything. Just everything about Colette is really easy right now. And it is going to be 100% our number three brawler. Now, the reason it's not higher, which it could easily be, is because our top two brawlers is just so much better than everything else that we have currently in the game. Now, we're going to have to put it at number three. But if there weren't these two very, very, very broken brawlers, this would most likely be the number one brawler in the game. And there's definitely not going to be any difficulties in any mode if you guys are queuing up with Colette on the team. Now, coming in at number two, we have Bell. And now, Bell 
obviously is one of the most broken brawlers in the game. I don't really understand why it got a buff, to be honest. Like, it was already good. It was already one of the best brawlers in the game. They gave it a little bit of a range nerf, and then it got buffed again. Like, I don't really understand why, but you know what? It is what it is. But Bell is just super strong. It has the very far range. It melts tanks. It charges super really fast. And once you get that super onto a brawler, it's basically over for them. There's no way they're going to stay alive. The shots are pretty easy to hit. The gadgets are pretty useful. The super is easy to hit. I mean, it's just a very good brawler, and there's no way around it. It's going to be good for a while until they give it a really hard nerf. It's basically unbeatable unless you have another long range that hits a lot of shots. But even then, Bell has a shield that can activate when you hit shots. And it's very easy for you to hit shots given the range. And it's just so hard to kill. You can't two-tap it as a Piper when it's got that shield on. You have to three-shot it or something. Like, it's just so unfair, this Brawler right now. And it counters literally everything in the game outside of throwers. So this is why it's going to be number two. And I feel like number one was a pretty you know obvious given but with that being said let's hop into the number one and let's show you guys what it is so coming in at number one we have el primo now we had to play like four different games because every game that we played ended in about 20 seconds because this brawler is just way too good to be in this game it doesn't really make sense why is this brawler so good right now every single time you get a super it is a guaranteed kill pretty much every time you get a super you're gonna like, like, it's just not fair. It's too, way too good. Like, I could have scored here, but I'm just waiting because I want one game to be long enough to where I can actually talk over it and make a YouTube video. But this brawler is just way too good. It's not fair at all. Every single brawler in the game you have a good matchup against because you are going to get your super worst case after you die one time. And it's just going to be way too easy for you to chain supers because when you're jumping on someone, you're charging your super. When you're hitting them, you're charging their super. I mean, your super. When they're hitting you, they're charging super. So once you get that first jump, you're just chaining so fast. This brawler is way too good. Even the counters like B and Shelly and Spike have a hard time against Primo now because every time you get that jump, it is basically a guaranteed kill. It's just unfair. I hope this gets a nerf. It already did get a nerf, but I hope it gets another nerf. It is way too good and hopefully they fix this because it is just not okay right now but with that being said that is going to be it for the youtube video i hope you guys enjoyed this top 10 list again it was incredibly difficult to make so there are going to be some brawlers outside that you guys would probably think are going to be inside the top 10 that's perfectly fine lists are opinion based and you know we've only had two days with the new meta so we don't really know everything exactly but that's going to be it for me today i hope you guys watched and enjoyed this video and if you guys did thumbs up comment subscribe you guys already know but i will be back again tomorrow i will see you guys then Peace.